Hello everyone, I'm Elisa. Welcome to the STO Ocarina YouTube channel. This community often asks us, how do I choose the right ocarina? Well, that's exactly what I'm here to talk about. But before I jump into that, I believe that understanding how to identify different ocarinas is the first step on this melodic journey. You wouldn't start a treasure hunt without knowing what you're looking for, right? Real quick, be sure to tap that subscribe button and click the bell to receive notifications on all scenes Ocarina. While you're at it, like this video to help us continue our mission to make music accessible anywhere, anytime, and to anyone. Now, onto the video. In this video, I'm going to tell you three simple elements that will allow you to identify different types of ocarinas with confidence. This knowledge will set the stage for my next video, where I will dive deep into the art of choosing the perfect ocarina. Let's get started! Now, let's go over three elements of ocarina identification with the SAM method. S for size. This focuses on the ocarina's physical dimensions, which significantly influence its sounds and playability. A for apertures. Counting the number of apertures or holes on the ocarina is vital. These apertures determine the ocarina's range and playable notes. M for materials. Finally, we will delve into the materials used to craft the ocarina. Different materials can give ocarinas unique characteristics in terms of sound's quality and aesthetics. Let's kick things off with size. When you spot a petite ocarina, you can expect a sound similar to a soprano singer in the world of music. This smaller size means a shorter air column inside, and when you blow into it, the air vibrates faster, producing high notes that dance in the air. On the flip side, when you come across a beat ocarina, it is like meeting the bass guitarist of the ocarina family. With a longer air column, the air vibrates more slowly, creating deep, resonant tones that can fill a room with warmth and richness. So remember, size is your ocarina pitch preview. Would you prefer a high pitch ocarina or a lower pitch ocarina? Let me know in the comments. Let's move on and to discuss the next letter A in SAM, apertures. Now let's explore the apertures or simply the holes on an ocarina. Seen of them as the ocarina's musical keypad. In essence, when you spot more holes on an ocarina, it is similar to having more keys on a piano. It means you can play a wider range of notes and melodies. Among the most common ocarina types are the six hole and 12 hole varieties, each offering their own unique musical possibilities. However, there are also ocarinas with double and triple chambers, each with a staggering range of two or even three octaves respectively. So, understanding the significance of these apertures or holes on your ocarina will help inform you which ocarina will be best suited for your unique needs. Let's continue our journey by exploring the final letter M in some materials. Now, let's talk about the materials used to craft ocarinas, because it's not just about the music, it's about the feel and durability too. It is like choosing the vessel that you will use to express yourself through music. Different materials give you different sensations when you touch and hold your ocarina. Whether it is a smooth elegant of ceramic, the earthy texture of clay, the lightweight convenience of plastic, or the natural grain of wood, each material offers a unique tactile experience. But here is the real kicker. Each material also shapes the sound of your ocarina. Ceramic and clay bring out warmth and richness. 
Wood provides a mellow texture sound, and plastic is all about durability. So the choice of materials in an ocarina plays a crucial role when selecting the right one. Now that you have got a grasp of the sand method, let's put into actions as we examine various ocarina using this approach. For example, this is a tenor 12-hole wooden ocarina. This is a base triple chambers purple clay ocarina. This little Q necklace is a soprano six-hole ceramic ocarina. And there you have it, my friends. The sand method, your trusty guide to understanding ocarinas a little better. Remember, this journey of discovery is all in preparation for what's coming next. In our next video, we will talk more about the art of choosing the best ocarina for you. So stay tuned. If you have any questions about what I cover here, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for joining us on this musical adventure and until next time, keep playing and practicing.